series of uh, lectures uh, today we'll discuss a very important presentation in our uh, opd that is leg swelling uh, this lecture is for education purpose of general practitioners and uh, patient are advised to seek uh, professional help uh, starting with the uh, approach to any leg swelling uh, the most important point that we should ask whether it is unilateral swelling or bilateral swelling the causes of the unilateral swelling depend on the onset whether it is uh, acute onset or we can say a recent onset uh, recent onset is uh, acute means within 3 days and sub acute means 3 days to uh, 3 months and chronic is more than 3 months uh, duration of swelling recent onset of swelling can be because of uh, uh, dvt that is uh, d vein thrombosis fractures hematoma infection insect bite any sprain or ruptured muscles unilateral swelling which are chronic in duration like more than three months of duration these are due to venous disease like varicose veins or venous insufficiency lymphedema vascular malformations due to reflux sympathetic dystrophy bilateral both sides of the legs are involved so it will be a recent onset due to uh, mainly drugs drugs like uh, calcium channel blockers anti hypertensive drugs due to inferior vena cava thrombosis so more is the proximal uh, site of thrombosis more chances of uh, bilateral swelling will be there bilateral dvt or acute heart failure acute renal failure or liver failure acute onset they tend to produce generalized swelling in which we can get bilateral uh, leg swelling as well chronic uh, bilateral swelling can be because of again due to uh, drug intake uh, chronic venous diseases pulmonary hypertension heart failure renal failure liver failure which, uh, which are chronic in uh, nature or uh, uh, hypoalbuminemia uh, that is uh, malnutrition related uh, pregnancy pregnancy compresses the inferior vena cava so this leads to bilateral leg swelling immobilization uh, or thyroid disorders can be due to obesity uh, the reason in obesity is key fat fat compresses the iliac veins or maybe uh, inferior vena cava leading to bilateral swelling now coming to the uh, patient coming uh, in the opd uh, so we have to ask uh, history in a sequence so we should go systematically ki history examination and some of the lab test to come to a conclusion of etiology uh, which is leading to uh, swelling first point in the history as we have discussed in previous slides ki uh, whether it is unilateral or bilateral swelling Unilateral swellings are due to a venous or lymphatic cause like varicose veins, venous insufficiency, D vein thrombosis or uh, lymphatic causes. Bilateral uh, swelling is mainly because of systemic uh, causes, systemic cause like uh, liver failure, heart failure or renal failure. Second point that we will ask in the history is the duration again acute swelling which is less than 72 hours of duration are mo mostly due to D vein thrombosis, infections. Uh, it can be thrombophilitis also trauma or exacerbation of congestive heart failure medicine induced uh, there can be a possibility like uh, NSAIDs can reduce the GFR and within days they can lead to swelling duration of the swelling uh, chronic uh, duration of the swelling chronic means more than three months they are mainly because of the venous insufficiency or lymphedema which are due to lymphatic dysfunctions some cases of uh, uh, long standing medical etiologies like renal failure ha or heart failure can lead to uh, chronic swellings positional change we should ask the patient uh, whether this uh, swelling it uh, increases with a dependency uh, like prolonged sitting or prolonged immobilization and improve with the elevation of the limbs this will be more suggestive of a venous disease while focal pain if it is associated this will point towards the musculoskeletal joint or reflux sympathetic dystrophy cases lymphedema is usually painless condition we should ask uh, unexplained weight loss this will point towards the malignant venous compressions systemic organ involvement uh, like uh, history of any liver disease heart disease or uh, uh, kidney failure uh, 
uh, that which we should be uh, asking from the patient uh, medication intake uh, intake so this is the most important history uh, this will save the patient from unnecessary investigation just as the history commonly used drugs like antihypertensive drugs calcium channel blocker nifedipine amlodipine they do cause indeed 50 percent of these patients develop swelling sooner or later uh, intake of some hormones like uh, steroids estrogen progesterone uh, testosterone uh, pregabalin, pregabalin uh, uh, patients they develop uh, predominantly bilateral leg swelling and that should be uh, assessed and uh, medication should be withdrawn. NSAIDs uh, by decreasing the GFR they lead to bilateral swelling. Pyoglutazone is known to cause uh, uh, edema. Now the past medical history precipitating event should be sought like uh, was there any history of trauma or there was prolonged bed rest any history of uh, joint operations or venous graft for the heart bypass, previous abdominal or pelvic surgeries, malignancy or radiation history. So all these should be asked. Uh, uh, they will uh, give you a clue ki that there is some sort of a underlying cause or precipitating event. Physical examination. Physical examination like general physical examination, if there is a, a, a raised GVP, that will point more towards the heart failure ascites or ictus hepatic disease abdominal incisions that will give you a clue ki there was some past uh, surgeries which must be the cause of uh, swelling collateral veins in the lower abdomen will point towards the inferior vena cava obstruction now coming to the proper examination of the swelling proper examination of the swelling uh, first we will look ki whether it is unilateral or bilateral swelling patient might tell you ki that only one limb is affected but when you examine uh, both the limbs uh, will have swell swelling so distribution of the swelling uh, will be assessed so first thing will be whether it is unilateral or bilateral then look for the distribution ki whether it is involving whole of the limb or whether it is involving a focal part of the limb so if there is a focal swelling of the calf it will points towards the uh, thrombosis infection superficial vein thrombophlebitis or secondary to some sort of injury any muscle rupture while if entire limb is affected in the swelling, so there will be some proximal pathophysiologies like IVC obstruction or systemic processes like heart failure, renal failure and liver failure. Feet examination is of importance. If there is a swelling of the dorsum of the feet, there is a squaring of the toes and the feet, uh, toenail deformity like sky jump uh, like uh, deformity this is more suggestive of lymphedema uh, here you can see that dorsum of the feet swelling is there uh, there will be a squaring of toes uh, and the foot uh, there will be a toenail deformity it become concave shape and hypoplastic so these are more suggestive of a lymph edema if uh, feet is paired with disproportionate swelling of the uh, ankle uh, to the uh, waist when compared with the trunk above this is most likely suggestive of a uh, uh, lipidema so uh, this is the diagram where you can see that uh, uh, swelling is present uh, in the thighs in the uh, leg area but uh, if you can see the legs so legs are spared from the swelling so there is no swelling in the uh, legs so this is most likely uh, uh, excess of uh, uh, subcutaneous fat deposit in the legs then we will look for the skin examination whether there is any redness or increased temperature so redness or increased temperature is seen in cases of uh, infections or thrombophlebitis like you can see here uh, skin will be shiny tight and there will be increased temperature of the skin redness of the skin varicose veins if they are present this is suggestive of a venous insufficiency the diameter of the dilated tortuous veins should be more than uh, 3 mm uh, so here you can see uh, the varicose veins and due to the uh, stasis there uh, there are ulceration or change in the skin uh, color can be seen especially over the ankle area pre-tibial mixed edema that is suggestive of graves thyroiditis as you can see it is uh, present on the pre-tibial area now uh, we should assess the pain uh, range of the motion and neurological abnormality associated with the uh, swelling Pain is most likely associated with D-vein thrombosis or musculoskeletal causes. Uh, neurological abnormality will be seen in uh, neurological disorder like paralysis that will lead to immobilization and swelling of that part of the uh, limb. Now the lab test. Uh, depending on the clinical history and examination, we should order complete blood count uh, uh, that, that will be suggestive of some sort of infection. Say there is a some cellulitis infection. So TLC will be raised, neutrophilia will be present. 
kidney function test uh, deranged creatinine will be there that will uh, points towards the renal failure liver function test uh, including albumin also so if uh, bilirubin is high sgot sgpt are high so that means it is a renal uh, sorry it is a liver failure and low albumin is suggestive of high, low albumin is uh, the reason for the swelling urine analysis especially looking for urine proteins if there is any proteinuria thyroid function test the screening test is a tss test that will suggest hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism d dimer test if we are suspecting that patient has some sort of a d vein thrombosis uh, the examination of d vein thrombosis uh, should be done homan sign will be there uh, without a clear uh, cause based on the history physical and lab examination suppose we have done the examination we have done the, the test all the tests are negative then the next best test is a doppler study of the low uh, leg so this is known as duplex ultrasound this is a initial and uh, we can say one of the best test to detect uh, uh, venous insufficiency if there is any lymphedema is there interstitial fluid is there go for a duplex ultrasound suppose uh, if uh, uh, du duplex ultrasound uh, is done but there is no obvious cause and we are suspecting that there is some sort of uh, abdominal or pelvis pathology is there like any malignancy ivc thrombosis is there so if these things are suspected mass effect by the tumor or any enlarged nodes or any obstruction then we can go for a, a contrast in our venous phase ct or mri while MRI can also be done if we are evaluating any musculoskeletal or neurological etiologies. Systemic causes. Systemic causes, three important systemic causes, uh, cardiac cause, liver cause and renal cause. These are the three important and we should take the history, clinical examination and we should look for the investigation to come to a conclusion because the treatment of the swelling is treat the underlying cause. Systemic cause, if we are suspecting a cardiac cause, history will be uh, dyspnea paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea orthopnea and swelling will be more in the evening time uh, due to the prolonged uh, standing position of the patient and their swelling will be less in the morning hours and this swelling uh, will be more on the dependent areas examination jvp will be raised s3 sound will be there and crepitations will be there in the chest lab test for the heart failure will be bnp will be elevated Hepatic cause, uh, clinical history will be of jaundice, abdominal distension, suggestive of ascites or dyspnea in hepatic cause is rare as compared with the cardiac causes. Examination will give us uh, the findings of ascites or liver failure signs like ictrus, gynecomastia, spider nevi. Lab test will be LFT deranged and albumin will be low. Renal cause uh, history will be suggestive of key swelling will be more in the evening and that will be more in the facial area where the loose connective tissue is there. Low appetite will be there. Patient will have restless leg syndrome. On examination, uh, there will be a high blood pressure. So out of all the three etiologies of cardiac failure, hepatic failure and renal failure, BP is maximum in the renal cause and there will be uremic signs. Uremic signs like uh, uh, pericardial rub will be present. Lab test, deranged KFT and proteinuria will be there. Now, uh, coming to the flow chart, uh, in summary, most of the patient come to us with chronic edema. Acute edema have a few causes uh, like uh, D vein thrombosis, uh, which can be a medical emergency. So we refer the patient to the hospital. But if a patient comes to you, ki, Dr. Saab, there is a swelling for more than three months duration, chronic edema. So let's see how should we approach. Chronic edema, first thing is always ask systemic causes, three systemic causes, cardiac, renal and uh, liver causes. If uh, th these are present, then we will go uh, for the investigation appropriately, treat accordingly. If there is no or partial uh, improvement, then we will go for a venous Doppler of the lower legs because sometimes there can be a mixed cause like systemic cause will also be there as well as the localized cause will also be there like uh, the venous insufficiency. Uh, when we evaluate the systemic causes, they are absent, uh, means key on clinical examination, history, investigation, we are not finding any uh, uh, cause. Then we will go for a uh, venous Doppler and most of the cases will be diagnosed on the basis of a venous Doppler. And then we take a decision appropriately key what should be the next line of uh, treatment in these patients. So this was the flowchart. If you have any questions, 